With our composer and front-end artifacts in place, we're ready to build the Docker image from the source code and copy the artifacts into the application. But before we push our GitLab CI changes, we're gonna look at our platform requirements that I mentioned in a couple videos ago. First, make sure that you have the latest composer version. So let's run composer self update. With the latest version of Composer installed, let's run Composer and look at all the commands. Composer has this check platform requirements command, and that will just verify that we have satisfied the platform requirements on the current system. We can run Composer check platform requirements. We can see that all of the extensions and the version of PHP are successful but let's open up our composer file and make this fail so we can see what it looks like. So let's change this to PHP 5.4. Now if we run this command again, we can see that our version of PHP has failed. Next, if I echo out the last exit code, we can see that it was one. So if we run a Docker build and the exit code is not a zero on this command, the build will fail, which is exactly what we want. This will mitigate against us running a Docker build and our Docker image not having the dependencies required to run the application. If you recall in an earlier step of our GitLab CI file, we're using this ignore platform requirements because at this stage, we just wanna install the PHP dependencies, but we're not really concerned about the platform requirements at this stage of the build. So let's revert this back to 7.1.3 in our composer file. If we jump back over to the Docker file, at the very end here, we can install composer and run this command. So I'm gonna paste in the composer installer command. So we're using curl to download composer, and then we're putting it in user local bin, and then we're making it executable. And then on this line, we're gonna check our platform requirements. So we can run composer, check platform, requirements. So let's go back to our composer.json file and make this change again. And let's run a Docker build so we can trigger this. So we'll change this back to 5.4. So on the command line, we're gonna run docker compose build app. So we can see that our version of PHP failed and the Docker build command exited, which is exactly what we want within our build environment. If we go back and change this to the right version, let's just run a build and verify that it works. So we can see that our check platform requirements command succeeded, which is exactly what we were hoping for and that our image is done being built. So this will protect us against any future extensions that need to be installed for the application to run, but perhaps our environment does not contain them. Typically, you're not gonna run into this because a lot of times you're adding extensions to the Docker file, and then you're developing features before you ship them. But just in case, we have this safeguard in place to check the platform requirements, which is a really good idea when you're automating your build pipeline. Now that we've completed that side quest, we're gonna go back to the GitLab CI file and actually add our Docker build step. So we have our PHP build step, we have our front end build step. Next, we're gonna add our Docker build step. So this step is going to use the build Docker stage. So we're gonna copy this and go back up to our stages. So we have our build stage, which includes the composer dependencies in the front end and then we have a build Docker stage. GitLab uses Docker for its build pipeline. Therefore, we need to run Docker inside of Docker in order to run Docker login, Docker build, and Docker push. It can be a little confusing, but since everything's within Docker, we need to be able to run Docker within Docker so that we can complete these steps. You can see here that we're logging in like we've done before in an earlier video in the course when we were working with the GitLab registry. Inside of here, we have some convenient variables here that we can use. We have a registry user and a password and the name of the registry. So we log in before we run our Docker build step. We're using pull because this will pull the latest base image. 
So in our case, it's going to pull the latest 7.2 FPM stretch image. This is important because we want to make sure we're pulling the latest version when we're running our build process. This is probably also a good habit to get into when you're running your local builds as well. We're tagging it with our registry image name. In this case, it's master, so there's really not a tag here. Otherwise, it would be something like 1.0. In our case, it's latest, and it's implied by this variable name. And the path to the file is within the Docker Docker file. So this looks very similar to how we would run it locally, except for we have a variable in here for the actual tag name. And finally, we're pushing to the registry image. So with this in place, we can go back to the command line. We're gonna git add everything. Let's run a git status real quick. Before we commit this, let's look at the diffs in the Docker file. So we're downloading Composer. We're making it executable and we're running our check platform requirements command. So we're going to commit this up with git commit. We're going to add the Docker build to the GitLab pipeline and we're going to run git push ci master. Let's jump back over to GitLab and check it out. So we can jump over here. These jobs should actually run pretty quick because we have those folders that are cached. So now we can visualize this build pipeline. We have the front end and we have the PHP dependencies. And then finally we have this Docker build. Let's jump back over to the code while this is running. Because we have these two artifacts, they're gonna show up within this step and when we run Docker build, and inside of the Docker file, we have this copy of our source code. It's gonna copy in the vendor folder and it's going to copy in those public files as well from our front end. If we go over to the docker ignore file, this is all made possible because we're not ignoring the vendor folder. If you were running composer install within the docker build process like I showed you in an earlier video, you would want to ignore the vendor folder. But since we're building it outside of the docker build process, we need the vendor folder to be copied into our image. So our front end and PHP steps are done. Let's jump into the docker build. Okay, so I did pause this video while the build was running, and now that it's done, let's scroll up and look at the output of this build. So you can see here that we're pushing our registry image, and the output here tells us what that image is. So the Docker image that we're using is this, so I'm gonna copy this, we're gonna pull it down in a minute. It looks like it successfully built and tagged the latest version. So every time we push to master, that's gonna create an updated latest tag. The other nice thing I like about this output for checking the composer platform requirements is that it gives us the version of all the extensions in case we need to troubleshoot these at any time. And then we can scroll up here and see the typical steps that we run when we run a Docker build. So since this succeeded, let's try to pull it down on our local image and inspect the file system a little bit. So I'm going to use docker run. We're gonna remove this. Just remember, if you're trying to run docker run and you're not logged into the GitLab registry, you'll need to run docker login in order to log in with your credentials. And I actually forgot to use the interactive and TTY flags. So dash IT. Now let's just peek around a little bit. So we have this vendor folder. Let's go into the vendor folder and just make sure that we have some actual files here. So it looks like we have files. Let's go into public and JS. And so far inside of our local Docker Compose builds, we don't have any front end dependencies. So we can see that we have an app.js file here and it's all minified. And so it looks like our build succeeded and we've copied all the artifacts. So at this point we have a working application build Obviously to run this, you'll need to configure some environment variables, but we could easily pull this in locally and with environment settings, run this image. So now that we have this pipeline working, there's one more thing that we're gonna look at. When you're tagging your application, like for instance, when I create a 1.0.0 tag, we want our GitLab CI build process to build a Docker image with a tag. 
So in the next video, we're gonna look at how we can run a build process for tags.